This video was made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. On November 3, 1969, the Public Broadcasting Service was launched. Founded by James Day, WGBH President Hartford N. Gunn Jr., and President of the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, John Macy. It was originally known as NET, and through the years, they provided countless commercial-free educational television. Sure, we could talk about something like Nova, This Old House, or Masterpiece Theater, but I would have looked back at something that I, as well as many others, grew up with, their children's programming. We all know PBS Kids and its programming that made learning fun, but a lot of those shows made an impact for some reason. It did for me, and that's what this video is about, my experience growing up with PBS Kids in the mid-90s to early 2000s. So as I mentioned before, I lived in Anchorage, Alaska from 95 to 97. Being an army brat, my dad was stationed there where he lived in his military housing facility. Being a young child, I watched a lot of TV. Of course, two channels I watched the most was Cartoon Network Gosh, that's a shock. and PBS. People know it as PBS Kids now, but back then its children's programming was on a daytime block called PTV. The block's branding, PTV Park, was a theme park setting and the mascots were the Pee Pals, little cartoon characters modeled after the PBS logo, and they would usually show the audience what's coming up next. They also started bumpers and interstitials teaching the young viewers about friendship, cooperation, self-esteem, etc. I remember some of the segments like the Friend Song and Pointer with Paula Poundstone, where comedian Paula Poundstone performed instructional skits accompanied by animation. I obviously didn't know who this was as a little kid, but now I know her as the comedian family guy made fun of once. And now back to the Kids' Choice Awards with host Paula Poundstone. I choose you and you and you, so come on. I said let's go! Of course, we can't forget about the nostalgic programming. Shows like Sesame Street, Mr. Rogers, Shiny Time Station, and Reading Rainbow predate PTV Park, with the former two going back to the late 60s. Sesame Street had the colorful, funny Muppets, like Big Bird, Oscar, Bert and Ernie, Elmo, Snuffy. These are characters that have been with us for 50 years, and every person has a fond memory of the lessons they taught and how entertaining they were as well. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was hosted by the late, great Fred Rogers. Rogers was a kind, gentle man who would spend the day with you, the viewer, where you would meet his friends like Speedy Delivery or special guests like Lou Ferrigno or sometimes just talk about feelings and how to express them healthily. My favorite part of the show was the land of make-believe, a fantasy land where you could meet King Friday, Lady Elaine, Daniel Tiger, and Lady Alberain. The segment would transition with the trolley. I used to think that thing was so cool. I even wanted one as a kid. I remember in 2003 when news came out Fred Rogers passed away. And even though I was slowly getting out of PBS, I remember being pretty sad about it. The show aired until 2001 and had reruns until the end of the decade. It's been parodied and referenced by everyone. And even though Fred Rogers is no longer with us, the legacy he left behind will last forever. Reedy Rainbow introduced me to the legendary LeVar Burton. He was my hero, a big brother of sorts. I read a lot of books as a kid. You can see the show played a big part of that. And let's not forget that iconic theme song. Take a look, it's in a book, a reading rainbow. There have been several attempts to get a revival off the ground. First an app, and later a live show aimed at families during the pandemic. Most recently, it was announced on a documentary called Butterfly in the Sky will be premiering at AMC Theaters this year, and I think it's going to be great, but you don't have to take my word for it. Shiny Time Station was my intro to both Thomas the Tank Engine and comedian George Carlin, who appeared in the wraparound segments as Mr. Conductor. Yes, I know Ringo Starr came first, but Carlin's episodes were the ones I remember watching the most growing up. We all knew him for his edgy political stand-up, and here he is on Shiny Time Station looking like he's having the time of his life. But what about PBS shows from my generation? Well, there was Where in the World is Carmen San Diego, an entertaining game show based on the Carmen San Diego computer game series. It taught kids geography, and the host was the always energetic Greg Lee, with Broadway legend the late Lynn Thigpen as the chief, not to mention that kick ass theme by Rockefeller. Puppeteer Sherry Lewis 
and her famous creation Lamb Chop, we're introduced to a new generation with Lamb Chop's Play Along, a show that encourages young viewers to participate in songs, games, skits, and more. It lasted for four seasons and won several Emmys. I even remember the spin-off Charlie Horse's Music Pizza. Sadly, Sherry Lewis will pass away in 1998, but in recent years, her daughter Mallory has kept her legacy alive and now performs Lamb Chop as well as Charlie Horse and Hush Puppy on social media. There was also Storytime. Remember Storytime? You know, with Kino, the puppet? He read stories? Remember him? Hell no! Well, how about a show I know you all remember, Barney and Friends. A successor to the Barney in the Backyard Gang video series, a large purple dinosaur teaches a group of children about imagination, friendship, and pretend play. This is one of the first television shows I ever saw as a kid, and naturally being a 90s kid, Barney was one of the first obsessions I ever had. It's not hard to see why, he was everywhere. Of course, that also made him a target for some Barney bashing, which was the main focus of the 2022 I Love You, You Hate Me documentary. Don't get me wrong, I can see how some people could get annoyed by him, but to me, there's such an innocence and kindness to him that I really love. And be honest with yourselves, there are worse shows children could be watching. I wasn't checking out the newer shows when the 2000s rolled around, so I didn't grow up with the episodes with young Selena Gomez, young Demi Lovato, and Riff, voiced by Amethyst. Even then, I couldn't bring myself to hate Barney. Nowadays, it seems like people are backing off with their extreme bashing, and recently, the character has been making a bit of a comeback. I'm really happy to see that. Yeah, I can't help it. My inner child still has a soft spot for this purple dinosaur and his friends, so he'll always have a place in my heart. Older kids can learn about science with Bill Nye, the science guy, and wildlife with the Kraft Brothers, Chris and Martin, who will go on to do a lot with PBS. In addition to original programming, there are also acquired Canadian British shows like Big Comfy Couch, Dudley the Dragon, Groundling Marsh, and Tots TV, not to mention the WB Record Zone, Kid Songs. Wishbone and Puzzle Place were two other favorites of mine. Wishbone had an adorable Jack Russell Terrier who imagined himself in classic books from The Prince of the Popper to The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. I think it's safe to say that this show introduced us millennials to classic literature. It was certainly entertaining as well as informative. It had a fun main character you like to follow. The Puzzle Place had a diverse group of puppet kids learn about racism, empathy for others, and doing the right thing. And here's something you might not have known. This show was made as a response to the 1992 LA riots. Animation was a big part of PBS, with a lot of the animated programs on the network being based on children's books. Unlike shows like Barney and Sesame Street, which were aimed at preschoolers, these shows were aimed more towards grade school children, the first of which came in 1994 with the Magic School Bus, teaching kids all about science, and my introduction to the great Lily Tomlin, who I would later enjoy in Grace and Frankie, and as Aunt May and in Into the Spider-Verse. Adventures from the Book of Virtues was a show I admit I didn't watch when it first aired, I saw it years later on YouTube, and it's a pretty solid series. I remember being surprised it had an all-star voice cast. Kevin Michael Richardson, Jim Cummings, Frank Welker, Kaf Sushi, and Pamela Siegel. And it's one of the only TV series animated by the short-lived Fox Animation Studios. 1996 would see the debut of Arthur, based on the books by Mark Brown. 11-year-old Aardvark named Arthur and his group of friends deal with everyday life and the challenges of growing up. The show dealt with issues children might go through, but in a way that doesn't talk down to them, like body issues, peer pressure, or learning disabilities, something I struggled with in school. Plus, the characters are likable, you can relate to each one of them, not to mention the fact it's really funny, with pop culture references and some clever dialogue. There's some lines I quote out of context, and there's a reason why it's on Spongebob level in terms of memes. It ran for an impressive 25 seasons, and even had a spin-off and a CG directed video movie that I never saw. By the late 90s, PTV Park was changed to PBS Kids, and the P Pals were replaced by two new iconic characters, a boy and a girl named Dash and Dot. In addition to being a blog on PBS, it was split off into its own 24 hour channel and lasted until 2005. More shows would be added, like Zoom, a reboot of the 70s kids sketch show, which I had no idea there was an original, Dragon Tales, a show I vaguely remember, Between the Lions, which promoted reading, and created by fellow Sesame Street alumni, He Who Shall Not Be Named, Teletubbies, a show I never watched, Zaboomafoo, 
when a Kraft Brothers returned to teach about wildlife, this time accompanied by a lemur puppet, and another show based on a book series, Clifford the Big Red Dog, which I remember a lot after coming home from elementary school. I remember a lot of the characters, and if I'm right, this was one of the last major roles of the late great John Ritter. There was even a spinoff I enjoyed called Clifford's Puppy Days. Saturday mornings, there was the Bookworm Bunch, produced by Canadian animation studio Nevada, where the shows on the block were based on kids' books. I didn't watch a lot of this when it first aired. Aside from CN or Nick, I was usually watching one Saturday morning, Fox Kids, or Kids WB on weekend mornings. I do remember some of them, like Seven Little Monsters and George Shrinks. Probably one of my favorite shows during this period was Sogwa the Chinese Siamese Cat. The show follows the adventures of the royal cat family in ancient China and the lessons they learned along the way. It's really cool how the show taught about Chinese culture. There was even a segment where Sogwa and Fufu the Bat teach the kids at home about various Chinese customs. Cyber Chase was a show I remember seeing a bit when it first aired, but gradually forgot about over time. And to my surprise, it's still going. It had an inventive premise where three kids and a Gilbert Godfrey bird friend use math to protect their world from the evil hacker, voiced by Christopher Lloyd. And once again, the theme song was a bop. And then there was Liberty Kids. There's nothing seditious about an intelligent woman wanting to keep well informed. That's for Black Dick to decide. Bosun, pass a tow line. Black Dick? That's what the sailors call Admiral Howe. Give us Black Dick and we fear nothing. <laughs> what? We're gonna end around here because quite frankly around 2004, I stopped watching PBS regularly. I was 11 and was more interested in CN, Nick, and the Disney channels. I remember watching a little bit of stuff like Maya Miguel and Postcards from Buster, but for the most part, I lost interest. Just how kids are, I guess. So I didn't grow up with Jakers, Word Girl, Fetch with Ruff Ruffman, or practically anything else that came after. But that aside, I still think PBS is the best when it comes to entertainment and education, and its programming did help shape who I am as a creative. But enough about what I think. What are your memories of PBS growing up? Tell me in the comments. And until next time, I'm 47 Cartoon Guy, and I gotta fly. If you'd like to support this series and many other videos, click the link below to our Patreon. You could get a special credit at the end of each video, and a shout out to your YouTube channel or blog, a commission by me, and now my $5 tier, in addition to early access and special credits, you can request a Hanna-Barbera special or movie for me to review as part of my fantastic legacy of Hanna-Barbera Mini Soul series. A lot goes into the making of these videos, and your help can make production go smoother. In terms of me paying for software, research materials, etc. And as always, if you're not able to donate, you could help by liking, commenting, subscribing, and clicking the bell icon. I thank you, and I gotta fly. I'll catch you later.